So uh, I would just like to go ahead and introduce our expert, which is Hitesh Motwani. Uh, he's worked with uh, Ogilvy, and you know he has also handled uh, the Twitter account for India. Uh, handled clients such as you know very uh, prestigious clients like Tata Group. Uh, you know he's worked with Ratan Tata, Mahindra. Trained over two hundred thousand plus participants. Uh, trained Vietnamese uh, government and building AI hub. Uh, trained firms like Google and Microsoft. and uh, he has trained over more than 400 uh, plus corporates like a b2b solution as well so uh, you know uh, there's no better person to go ahead and you know help you all understand about generative ai than hitesh motwani right now and he is the one you know who has also curated our program very well so over to you hitesh and you can take it forward from here thank you thank you so much uh, for the sumit and hi everybody a very very warm welcome first of all can you guys hear me loud and clear give me a quick yes on chat box right we want a chat buzzing we want all of you to be high energy because today what i'm going to show you is actually going to be something which you can take home and you can go and implement it not just hear me but actually go and implement it right so please give me a yes on the chat box that will be great if you can hear me loud and clear right and i would want the entire chat box buzzing guys all right so pretty cool uh, let's get started today <clears throat> so you see um we have been using <laughs> AI for quite some time now, and all of us, you know, I'm sure that all of you must have experienced ChatGPT so far, right? But today, my aim is I'm going to show something to you which has not been normally done in ChatGPT, right? Which which people don't really do, and people don't really <laughs> work with. So let's get started. But you have very less time. You have a lot of things to cover. Let me just share my screen very quickly. Okay. So a little bit more about me, who I am, and what do I do? So while Sumit just introduced about me, uh, but just to give you a perspective, I've been in the AI space for seventeen years now. I've been helping a lot of brands, companies understand the space of AI. In last two years, I must have trained close to two fifty plus organizations only on generative AI. So much so that I work with some of the biggest brands in the world, like McDonald's, CNBC, <coughs> Woka, Times, <coughs> Times of India, and many, many more. I'm also a faculty of about seven IIMs in India. I do a lot of workshops in India, Singapore, Dubai, US, UK, Malaysia, just to name a few. And um, I've also been a mentor with brands like Facebook in Asia as well. All right, so a couple of ground rules in this session. Number one, this is going to be a completely hands-on session. So please, uh, do it with me. Don't just hear me. I would say do it with me. Number two, take notes because. You might remember something today, but forget something tomorrow. So please take notes, take away home some good things that you can actually go ahead and implement it. And number three, ask questions. Because the more questions you ask me, the more energetic even I will feel to give it back to you. So please ask me questions. All right. So let's get started. Whenever you work with any AI project, this is a very important equation we start off with. Can someone tell me? You know, we always say that AI plus X is equal to productivity. Any idea what is X over here? And I want you to make a wild guess. Tell me what, according to you, is X over here? Give it a shot. we can see a lot of answers coming in here that's that's great i can see people saying you know uh, it is analysis collaboration implementation and i think farooq and park got it 100% correct it's human it's all of you a lot of time you know, we people feel that ai is going to take over jobs ai is going to like do this do that but to be very honest ai is nothing without us ai is nothing without you and me If you are able to give good instructions to AI, AI cannot do anything, right? So you all over here, the subject matter experts are the X factor, and that's what I'm going to start off with. Then you know, don't really think that AI is the end all and be all of the world, right? AI is nothing without all of you, which is subject matter 
एक्सपर्ट्स नो इमेजिन अ वर्ल्ड यू नो वे टुडे टीम्स आर स्पेंडिंग मोर देन सॉरी गाइस लिल अल अनवेल टुडे या सो इमेजिन अ टाइम यू इमेजिन अ टाइम वेयर टीम्स आर स्पेंडिंग मोर देन 80% ऑफ द टाइम ऑन स्ट्रेटजिक डिसीजंस देन मुंडे इन टास्क्स नो दिस स्टेटमेंट वुड हैव बीन अ हाइपरबोली बट टुडे दिस स्टेटमेंट इज बिकम अ रियलिटी वेयर इन एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम एआई इफ यूज्ड वाइजली कैन एक्चुअली ऑटोमेट मोस्ट ऑफ द टास्क्स and you know it is just a matter of time that we can simply use ai to do uh, all our tasks uh, efficiently and if you see everything around us is changing look at manufacturing earlier it was by you know looking at manual assembly lines but today we're basically using robotics in that you look at people's shopping behavior look at people's product behavior that's actually changing you look at uh, you know people's behavior for in terms of uh, digitalizing health records or like you know uh, they book comfort with online today the offline channels so today our cars are driven by ai movie recommendations are given by ai even investment decisions are made by ai the question is why not our work why not what we do as product managers be also changed with ai now the question is what can ai do for us first thing AI tools like ChatGPT, the tools can help you with research. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people use ChatGPT and they feel, oh, you know, I don't get real-time data, I don't get real-time updates. It's true because ChatGPT has a cut-off date. Now, if you want to do a product analysis, you want to do some competition mapping, you want to compare two products, you cannot use ChatGPT for that. And ChatGPT is a very, very old tool, to be very honest, right? But to be very honest, you can do things much beyond that. so i'll probably show you something very interesting right now why don't all of you any one of you give me two products of your choice that you want to compare two products any two products your choice and i'll be using ai for that and i'm going to show you how will i be able to get a competition analysis for those two products anybody can put any two products on the chat box i will take those two products so don't give me generic products like say coke pepsi apple and what give me some difficult one guys Give me some specific that you guys are working on, that you are working on right now, and be specific. For example, I would say Apple iPhone 16 Pro was a Samsung Flip Z, right? So give me something specific. Don't give me generic stuff because generic even charge you bring you. I would want if you're taking credit card, give me two credit card. HDFC Infinia was it Axis Magnus. So be little specific. The more specific you are, the better it is. But I'm going to use that product and we'll show it to you. Okay, I got Himanshu saying that you know you can use Salesforce CRM versus Dynamics CRM. Let's try to use that one. Okay, so now if you want to do a competitive analysis, let's see a tool for doing that. We're going to use a tool by the name called you know um, something called as Bing. Because why? Because Bing can go and search the internet and can actually go and you know figure out things for us uh, and can actually do real time search for us. It's just it's actually very cool. Let me give an example to you. When I when I say what do I really mean by it? Okay, let's take if I probably open ChatGPT right now. Let me go to ChatGPT. <laughs> and if I ask ChatGPT, let me show you. Let me in fact open the logged out state. Let me simply say, can you tell me? how many medals did us saudi india win in the recent olympics 2024 you see chat gpt just says it doesn't take in place yet they are scheduled to be in july 26 to august 11th therefore we don't have any medal count for us saudi arabia and india in these countries why because chat gpt cannot search the internet it can't figure out things and you can't trust chat gpt with answers when you start looking at it let's say for example just to be ask him okay can you give me a competitor analysis between salesforce with this ms dynamics crm it will give the answer to you this time but it will be generic it won't be specific it will not give you specific data specific details over here and this information might be wrong why because chat gpt does not give you a source it doesn't tell you where to get the data from 
So you can't trust chat GPT with research, unfortunately, right? Now let's use Bing. So we're gonna ask Bing, okay, can you tell me, you have the same prompt over here. Tell me middles where, middle Saudi, US, Saudi, India win in recent Olympics. Let's see. So, previously, no, paid version can do this for you, but free versions can't do that for you, okay? So, it simply says, US, 106 medals, India, 10 medals, and Saudi Arabia, one medal, right? So, we can see that, that Bing can actually go and search the internet in real time. Now, let's try to use our product competition over here. So, I'm going to simply use a new topic, a new chat window, and I'm going to simply say, okay, can you please help me, you know, understand... <coughs> Look at this, guys. As somebody put a prompt, can you please help me with competition analysis for Salesforce and MS Dynamics? Give this data in table format. Look at this. Tell me user interface, customization options, you know, integration capabilities, AI for automation, pricing starts at $25 per month, $50 per month, free trial, 14 days, 30 days, target audience, small to large, medium to large, strength, strong community, support extensive app ecosystem, and this is complex VIP integration, weakness, higher cost, complexity for small businesses can be complex setup for higher cost as well. Right. And then it also gives me a source from where to get data from. Forbes, look at this guys. Forbes, BDB Daily, Rand Group, Select Hub, and Techco. So I can rely on this data. I can trust this data because this data is accurate. This data is current. This data is real time. How many guys over here for this to be cool? Give me a good cool on chat box. Yeah. And the good thing is I can also download this data into an Excel format, guys. Okay. So you see, when you want to work on any research based data, don't use ChatGPT use Bing for that because Bing can go out there and give information to you in real time what ChatGPT can't, right? So ChatGPT is not the only tool in the world to be very honest. There are tools beyond ChatGPT which can help you with things like crazy. <coughs> now, let's take for example, I wish to, you know, build a presentation, okay? How many guys over here want to build infographics, presentations on certain things right now? Give me a quick me on chat box. You want to do that every single time to showcase your product. Okay. Yeah. So let me show you something, a very cool tool again to help you do this as well. So now I'm simply going to say, okay, can you give me a note on how can uh, tools like CRM be helpful for product managers. Now, I can simply get a write-up from here. Okay, let me just take a little write-up from here and I'm going to make an infographic right now in front of you and show it to you guys. Okay. So, let me like, just copy this stuff from here. Let me write this stuff for me first. Okay, amazing. So let's simply say share, share. Okay, let me just simply download this file into a text format, okay? And now I got this answer. I'm going to take this answer right now onto a Word document. Now, look at the magic guys, okay? Then we're going to like just copy this stuff. And I'm going to go to a tool by the name called as Napkin AI. <coughs> It is completely free, doesn't cost you a single rupee. So, what I'm showing is absolutely all free tools. I'm not showing any paid tool to you guys. Okay. You don't get napkins for free. <coughs> and then I'm going to paste the data over here. Okay. Let me just show you some very interesting stuff. Let me just remove all this additional text. Let me put this data for benefits of CRM for product managers. Okay. I paste the data, which I got from a Word document. Now look at the magic, guys. I'm simply going to take this data out. And I'm going to simply use this button. 
over here. And now if we read this entire data, and guess what, guys? It's going to give me a diagram, like an infographic, which I can use for my presentation. I can use for anything that I want. And look at this, guys. Should product managers use CRM system? Use CRM, don't use CRM. What is the benefit of that? And look at this. I got like multiple diagrams. Okay, CRM benefits. All right. Then basically, I, I also basically got other diagrams as well. To see now, <coughs> I'm able to make quick infographic type data over here in no time. How many guys found this to be amazing? Give me a quick wow on chat box which found this to be super duper cool and you know actually can simply make you like a very quick infographic with just a bunch of text right now which otherwise would have been extremely extremely difficult but actually you can do this at lightning speed guys. Right? So this is, this is really what AI can do. It's really amazing. And I think it's one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen so far. So I use it a lot of my presentation these days. I simply use AI for almost everything I do on, you know, on, on AI. Yes, free, uh, yes, still data to be very honest, but then it's actually very cool considering that you can just take a bunch of random text data and you can actually then take this data and it can actually like, you know, build you some very cool looking infographics about it. So, so you know, I've seen, if I mean, if you like this, key departments in a bank, types of loans, you know, central loan processes, all of that stuff. So, I mean, I mean, some very cool infographics with this to be very honest. Then it's just about, you know, using different, different styles to see CRM benefits. Okay. It looks so clean, so amazing, right? And that's actually the, that's actually like an advantage of doing so. They have like a standard fixed template that you can actually use for, and you can start building you know, some, uh, some of the really cool looking infographics, which you, which wouldn't have been possible otherwise. Okay. So see, you can be like cool diagrams over here. Um, can team be viewing working synchronously? Like, yeah, so we can do that as well in Napkin. You can just collaborate with people over here, right? You can share on top and I can share this with other people and they can collaborate with me right now. All right. <coughs> so you see, we've, we've come very, very far with AI right now. So we've been able to like, we've been able to do multiple things. We can do research, build buyer personas, build product map, perform any product management task that you can think about right now. But let me now show you something interesting, which is my today's topic to help you understand that how can you become an AI based product manager? You just don't become a regular product manager, but become an AI based product manager for yourself. All right. Before that, let me quickly give you a little bit of introduction about generative AI. So you see what generative AI is all about. Generative AI is not just, you know, it's just not like your traditional AI. It's an AI system which can actually help you to generate new form of text. It can be text, it can be video, it can be audio, it can be image, it can be like multiple things to be very honest, right? See, traditional AI used to be discriminative in nature. You see a lot of images of dogs and cats, and you should train the AI model to decide and tell us whether it's a dog or it's a cat. But with generative AI, today it can make new images for us, images that we've never seen so far, okay? And um, it's crazy. Today, AI has come that far that now it can make images which you cannot even say is actually not AI. <coughs> Let me show you an example uh, which actually blow your mind away. Okay. Just give me a second. Mm. <coughs> okay. Look at this image in front of you guys and guess which one is AI generated. By the way, both these tools, both these images are completely made by AI. Okay, both images. Can you even differentiate between reality and AI, to be very honest? Not really, right? Look at the second image right now. Again, both the images that you see in front of you are generated by AI. So AI today has been you know, a pivotal in making new content, new images, new presentations, which we've never ever seen before. And that, my friends, is how AI has changed the game, right? So, how many guys over here now would want to see some examples that we can actually use in this space of product management and we can start using them for ourselves? Give me a quick me on chat box in case you want to see AI's role in product management right now. And you want to actually see some live examples that how can product managers and product owners use AI extensively for ourselves. So now today my idea is to show you that how can you take ideas to product development and project management using AI. 
So I've got four examples with me and I'm going to show you these four examples one by one in a very step-by-step -step sequential way. So my first example is when I'm going to show you that how can you use AI for gathering real-time data analytics. I can actually you know, take any data and I can do a, I can perform an entire analytics on that data using AI. How many people over here struggle to get insights on data? Give me a quick eye on chat box. Engage you struggle getting insights on data most of the time. Yeah, because it's difficult, you know. Uh, it's only a job data science team, a data engineering team, but sometimes they don't really help product managers as such. Well, guess what? Today you have a power of AI to help you with it. So I am I've taken a gummy data over here. Let me just take you to a dummy data right now. This data is in Kaggle. In case you wish, you can also like use it with me. All right, this is the data for all of you. This is the data of video game sales. Any data about, you know, the name of the game, the platform is selling on, year is sold on, genre of the game, publisher, what is the net sales? What is the European sales? North America sales, European sales, Japan sales, and other sales right now. Okay. This is the data that we have. And let's try to find some data analysis on this. Okay. Uh, let me download this data over here. Now, mind you guys, this can only be done in the paid chat GPT account. Unfortunately, you cannot do this in the free chat GPT. Right. And, um, but, the results are so impressive that actually it can blow your mind away. <laughs> Let me take you to my paid ChatGPT account. And now let me just upload this data over here. Let me undo this, this file over here first. So once I unzip this file, I can upload this data onto my chat GPT. I'll simply say, can you quickly help me understand total sales of each game of say, say top 10 games okay so you can simply now have a data over here and ask questions like as you're chatting with the data then ai will get to work and help you understand that what are the top sales of top 10 games so far as you can see we Sports at 82.7 million. Super Mario Brothers did about 40 million. Mario Kart did about 35 million. We Sports is about 33 million. Pokemon, 31 million. Tetris, 30 million. New Super Mario Brothers, 30 million. We Play, 29. New Super Mario Brothers, V is 28. And Duck Hunt is about 28. Now, this is actually pretty impressive that considering AI can now read data in almost real time and give you the answers. Now, let me show you something else, okay? Um, and let me show you some that, how to make graphs and charts for you. Let me just say, can you quickly make a bar chart of top 10 games or top five games and sales in each region? And guess what, guys? AI will now get to work <coughs> and actually, give you a bar chart of top five games in each region. And you just like chatting with data. You're not really, you know, you just you need to be skilled in asking the right question today, not skilled enough in figuring out how to do data analysis. How many guys over here are mind blown with this? Give me an MB, mind blown till now, that you're able to see graphs, charts, analysis, all using AI in front of you at this point in time, guys. Just with, Talking to a friend, talking to an intern, right? And you can just get 
any form of data over here. All right, I'm not done yet. Now let me show you something even amazing than what we just seen so far. I'll simply say that can you analyze the entire data and help me with a business strategy on how to increase sales and which product should I focus on which region? Make me relevant charts, graphs, and insights and help me with a report which I can present to the management. And boom, right? Now, AI will get to work. It'll just do the entire analysis in front of you, read the entire Excel, do the entire analysis, and make the relevant graph, charts, analysis, all, and click of a button, guys. Let's wait. As you can see, global sales breakdown by region. You see, North America sales are the highest, then Europe, Japan, and others. I can also see the top 10 games in North America are V Sports, Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, and top 10 games in Europe again are V Sports, Mario Hunt, Will, Will Sport Resorts, and Nintendo Dogs. <laughs> same in Japan, same in other regions. Now, it tells me that North America accounts for the largest portion of global sales, followed by Europe, Japan, and other regions. They suggest primary focus on North America and Europe will still be tapping into the specific taste of Japanese market. Top 10 games by region. In North America, games like Wii Sports and Super Mario Bros. dominate the market. Europe, battle similar, Nintendo games being top sellers. However, there is a stronger potential in introducing racing and adventure games given the popularity of Mario Kart. In Japan, the focus is shifting more towards uh, games like Pokemon and Tetris. Show, showing a strong preference of role-playing and puzzles-based games. For the regions, pattern mirrors with global trend with Nintendo games leading, but there's no room to this, this, this room for diversity into new genres, especially sports and platform. Recommendation, uh, North America focus on marketing, Europe leverage popularity of gaming, racing games, Japan, role-playing games, other regions, and diversity of their platforms. Product expansion. Consider developing cross-platform capabilities for top games, especially for Mario Kart. Investing and expanding in V brand by promoting into fitness and sports, which have shown consistent popularity globally. I mean, look at this. It's like a business analyst sitting in front of you. And guess what? It also gives me a strategy report. I guess a detailed strategy report and I can just read it through. How cool is this, guys? So, Myra, I mean, to be very honest, uh, I have done this data multiple times. I can put this data onto an uh, in Excel sheet and do some analysis over there. It's actually very accurate. And to tell you <coughs> why it's accurate, because AI does everything in a Python code. So if you're, if you're like, you know, if you're not able to Python, you can see it doesn't really, AI doesn't just do any magic. It runs a Python command on this data and gives you charts and graph basis that if you remember Python, you'll know that this data is actually fairly accurate. And if you want, you can take the Excel. I've already given Excel to you on Kaggle, and you can do the same report at your end as well by just simply making your own report. Right? That's how it is. All right. How many guys over here are now getting super excited that and to understand that what possibilities this AI has for you as a product manager and product owner and automate stuff. Do you feel empowered right now that actually we can now get insights on our data? We can get uh, graphs on our data. We can get business research on our data. It just click of a button, guys. Give me a quick yes or if you find this to be super, super cool. So Richard, I mean, I'm not really sure about the data to be very honest on Kaggle. I just want to show you that AI can analyze any kind of data. Now, you can choose any of your data, to be very honest, and do the same stuff on that. It doesn't really matter what data you use. I'm using a dummy data right now to showcase the possibilities over here. 
I'm not here to look at the accuracy of data and how data is accurate, to be very honest. All right. Okay. So, Jana, I am a product manager myself and I've worked with data, which is almost, you know, one lakh rows, one lakh rows and 50, 60 columns. And I've worked in real life projects. I cannot show you any real life project over here, to be very honest, because of confidentiality. But if you want, you can try it out yourself. And the results actually are always amazing. What I do manually in Python and what I do with ChatGPT, the results are actually same. Because understand, guys, that ChatGPT does not do something on its own. It just knows how to run a Python command. It runs a Python command on data and gives you the insights on the data. As long as the Python code is correct, your data is clean, the accuracy is correct. If your data is unclean, your data might not be that great. So it does not matter whether you basically are using, uh, you know, a chat GPT or a Gemini or some other tool, to be very honest. As long as your prompts are great, you start getting better results. If it's a real life data or dummy data, doesn't really matter. And I've tried on 100 data sources so far. I also train people on this. So it really, really works. Okay, now, now concerning about the security of data, see, now, to be very honest, chat GPT is reviewing the this data. So data, uh, I mean, chat GPT doesn't get trained on this data, to be very honest. Um, because for them, your data is unreliable. But if it's a concern about security, then you have to pay for it. If security comes at a cost. So then you have to go to a platform like Azure OpenAI, which is a tie-up with OpenAI and Azure. And Azure will guarantee data security to you because of matters of license on it, right? So if you want security, pay for it, right? Even in this case, I'm using a paid chat GPT. I'm using a free chat GPT, by the way. So, but then this data can be seen by the research team of chat GPT to improve their model, right? So this data is not that secure. But ideas, I'm just showing you the possibilities of AI. And if you want interest security, go for a paid account, go and build your own products around it. That's the idea over here. Okay, let's actually go ahead and let's go to the next use case, guys. So see, look at the framework. I would say, you know, don't, don't really bother about um, uh, the other aspects right now. Look at the way I do things. Now, there are alternatives for getting secure data as well and get alternatives for getting unsecured data as well. If you're working public data, you might just use open source tools. If you have private data, consumer security, go for a custom-made tool, guys. Okay, Azure OpenAI, that's the tool name. Azure OpenAI, basically the tie-up with Microsoft and OpenAI, and they have a similar stuff. Uh, which can actually help you with the same analysis. Um, and that's in a more secured environment. In that case, data resides on your servers. Data is not taken outside your servers, not outside your premise. And sometimes what happens is when you're working on some projects, there are government limitations. I mean, there are limitations by the country. The data has to be on your own company server, right? It cannot go outside company server, for example. So in that case, also you have to use AI. Okay, let's go next one. The next one is, let's take, for example, that I want to validate product idea. I got some product idea in my mind. I want to validate that. I can even use AI for that as well. So what I've done is I've actually got a simple prompt over here. I'm going to use the same prompt for now. <coughs> so look at this, guys. I say, your task is to validate the viability of your product uh, called AI Base Sales Analyzer. Okay, so I just think I'm making a tool, which is AI-based sales analyzer. I can upload data, make sales charts and graphs. Uh, and I want AI to use following guidelines over here. I want the AI to give me main features of products. I want the features can, the product can take up voice input and provide with insights on how does the sales call go. And most importantly, I also want to understand the target audience of this product. And, um, you know, and I also tell them that this product is designed for sales professionals and call centers. And most importantly, I also want AI to evaluate the evaluation criteria, such as user engagement, particularly in market potential, and also just improvement and new features. So to be giving my idea product to AI, and I'm asking for validation. When I put this prompt over here, now look what AI does. AI tool will automatically look at this product and then give me, okay, the main features of this product are, the product analyzes sales calls, okay? The purpose is that it helps sales professionals to improve their calling, Performance, target audience is sales professional call center people. Evaluation criteria is user engagement, you know, um, practicality, I mean, giving accurate insight, market potential. Is there a clear market? So it gives me questions, right? Is there a clear market potential, market demand for this tool right now? How does this tool turn against competition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
And then AI also gives me some improvement and new feature. It tells me I should be using real-time analysis. I should be having integration with tools like HubSpot and Zoho. I need to also have performance tracking and reports as well, not just analysis of sales calls. And I need to also have an AI coaching module where people can also get coached uh, with AI and help improve sales as well. It should also have a multilingual support. It should also gamify for me. So see, I got so many ideas about my product and I got validation of the product, which I did not even think about. How many guys over here are now totally mind blown that AI can start thinking for you, can act like a buddy for you. You give a product idea to AI, AI will actually give you, you know, product features and um, something that you must have not thought about yet, right? So you can actually do that as well with AI tools like ChatGPT and other stuff, okay? Second thing what you can do is validate your product, guys. So far, so cool. We may be cool on chat box, guys. Wants to be super duper cool. Okay. Third thing. This was the third use case. What I can do for you. The third use case is, let's now leverage predictive analytics and let's now see if we can make a smarter product roadmap. So what I've done basically for this example is, I've taken a dummy data. This is again a data which is which I just made up. Okay, in one of my earlier surveys. So one of the products I'm working for, that we're working for, which is a smart health tracker. Okay. And I just got about 200 people to give me a survey. So you can see over here, in this product, I've got this actual survey of people. Okay. I think it's, let me just take this, take this data as, down this data in Excel. Okay. Now, I got a survey data. Now, mind you, this is actually a, like a filled up survey for people. Now, if you have to, if you have to analyze data manually, how much time will it take for you to analyze data manually? This is the qualitative data, guys. This is not something which is, you know, um, data which is actually what we say is structured or like tabular, like it's basically in a numerical format. It's all non-numerical data right now, unstructured data. How much time would it take for you to analyze this kind of data? Give me a number, one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hours. What do you guys think? So Ruben asked me a question, why don't we use Copilot? So in Copilot, I cannot upload data, unfortunately. I can also use Copilot, but Copilot can just reference the internet and search about it. I don't want this tool to reference the internet. I want this tool to think and give me an answer. That's why when you want to think, you want advisory, use ChatGPT. When you want AI to go and search the internet for something, then use, then basically use your co-pilot. Okay, Rupan, I hope that answered your question. All right, so at least four to five hours to do this thing. Yeah, absolutely correct. More than that, actually. Now, let me show you the power of AI or how it can analyze this data at a very quick, quick glance. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my... Chat GPT. I'm simply going to upload this data right now. This is a paid chat GPT again, not the free one. All right. And I can simply get, get a smart watch health watch tracker. I think I'm going to say, can you analyze this data and give me uh, a quick snapshot of what features do people demand? Also, give me a word cloud on features that people are looking forward to. As well as, tell me what current features in our smartwatch do people dislike? So, AI is now going to quickly analyze data very fast using Python again. Okay, see, just running Python code at the back end. And then I was going to basically make me graphs and charts and tell me about desired features that I'm looking for in the product. And it's going to make me a word cloud automatically. Let's see how does that really span out to be. To see. It's a word cloud, guys. The bigger the word, 
the more features people want, the smaller the word, the less feature people want. So you want stress tracking, hydration reminder, blood pressure, pressure monitoring, smart assist. So see, people uh, demand features like stress tracking, hydration, blood pressure monitoring, smart assistant, ECG monitoring. People dislike design, accuracy, comfort, battery life, and interface. Okay. So when I will simply say, basis about feedback, can you help me with a product roadmap for next 12 months and also prioritize relevant features for me. Now, basis data is going to tell me, okay, month one, we focus on core competency, which is battery life improvement, user interface design, accuracy of features. It also tells me why and what action to actually take. And it is one, two, I can introduce new features like stress tracking, hydration, blood pressure monitoring. And then in my quarter three, I can focus on ECG monitoring, smart assistant, bug fixes. And quarter four, I can think about some integration third-party apps, longer battery life, and also customizable watch faces and features as well. So priority summary, high priority must have is battery life, stress tracking, interface design, hydration reminder, blood pressure, medium priority is ECG, smart assist, Okay, and low priorities, continuous performance updates and new hardware and battery life. How many guys over here now? Totally mind blown. Super cool, everybody. Yeah, that I can also analyze not just quantitative data, but even qualitative data, right? If you're, if you're, if you're so far enjoying this, give me a E on chat box. So far you enjoy the session and you're able to get something valuable. This stuff, guys, people don't even talk talk about in paid courses, to be very honest. And we're giving you this absolutely free and a free webinar right now. Okay. All right. So it's actually pretty cool. But yeah, Richard, as I told you earlier, you know, AI alone can't do anything. It requires people like you and me to prompt, right? And that's where the skill actually comes in, right? It's about prompting. So yeah, Sanjali, things have changed. Remember I told my first slide that um, today... AI can do a lot of your mundane tasks, right? Uh, we can actually focus on more strategic aspects than basically your mundane aspects. AI can really do almost all the mundane tasks one can really think about right now. All right. I'll just show you one last thing for the day, guys. Then I will hand it over to the upgrad team for uh, taking it ahead. But one last thing which I'm going to show you right now, last feature in the AI, my fourth stuff, it's now to basically help you to, uh, like, you know, how to probably get best practices for optimizing product based on AI generated recommendation. Like, how do I optimize a product? How do I, you know, um, get understanding about it? So to be very honest, let's try to basically, like, you know, again, optimize a product using AI. So I mean, again, I'm going to come back to my same chat GPT window when I was doing analysis of data. And I'm going to say, okay, can you help me I want to improve perception about my product and uh, turn the insights to favorable points. Can you help me in building? Okay, let me just go back to my slide. Let me just see what my point actually was. Just one second, guys. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, here we go. Can you help me in optimizing my product and build a better version in next three months? Help me with a plan in a table format. And then guess what, guys? AI will get to work and tell you that, okay, area of improvement over here is battery life, current perception dissatisfied, proposed solution, optimize battery life, key action points, conduct power consumption analysis, optimize battery management software, test and implement battery saving features, and push the firmware updates. Next, interface ease of use. Users find interface difficult to navigate, redesign your interface, conduct UX UI research, redesign navigation, implement a cleaner, more and more interactive UI. Accuracy of sensors. Inconsistent tracking of health metrics like GPS, improve sensor accuracy, review and recalibrate sensors, update software algorithms, conduct beta testing. Now, I got the entire product feature list 
on what should I do, what action should I take in a table format, I can ship it to my product owners and I can then start implementing on this, make a scrum out of this and actually get things done. You guys think that your work is now more easier with AI guys? Yeah? Give me a yes on chat. I think you found this to be super cool. So Anjali, in the paid version, there's no limit in what you can get analyzed with AI, to be very honest. In the free version, you can only do to three, three paths for free, but in the paid version, no limit. <coughs> so basically, this is what I had in terms of helping you understand <coughs> four things that AI can do for you today. Right. Let's just quickly recap. So number one, AI can basically help you to generate real-time analytics using data. Number two, it can help you validate product ideas. Number three, it can leverage predictive analytics for smarter product road mapping for you. And number four, it can help you to get best practices for optimizing products based on recommendations given by AI. Right? And I hope, and this is, then, then but then wait, this is not the end of it. We've got a lot, lot more in our, upcoming cohort that we're going to have with all of you guys.